The name of this meeting is Watch This. Watch This, right? I was thinking, uh, you guys all know I used to be in the magazine business and uh, I trained a lot of people, man. More people than I could even count. Every day we would have a person, basically we felt like we were stuck with a new person every day. Meaning every single day of the week, oh, this, it, I'd see my name on a car car and then I'd see the new person's name right next to my name that is gonna be with me for the day. And so, I, I mean, I'm talking about people of all shapes and sizes and, and attitudes and personalities. Like we just learned how to train people in general. And I ended up getting really good at it. You know, I ended up practicing. I was really good at selling. And one of the key things that really helped me with my training was the fact that when I started, I had a good trainer. So the trainer that took me out my first day, uh, actually you guys have met him, Matt is my friend. He's actually the first person that took me out in the magazine business and actually hired me into the magazine business and trained me door to door. And he showed me a what, watch this attitude, right? Basically when you're going up to a door, it's an attitude of watch this. Watch how good I do when I knock on this door and I get to inter interact with this customer. So I started practicing. I, used to, I got so good at it that I would literally pick out a house on the street and I knocked on so many doors across the country, door to door, learning how to communicate with people that I'd be able to tell the type of person that was going to answer the door just by looking at what kind of car they drove. And if they, I mean, I could tell like if it was like little beads in the wind in the rear view mirror, I'd be like, oh, that's a female. If I seen a car seat, I'm like, oh, that's a mom. Like I would have it narrowed down. And I used to tell people that I was training, I'd be like, watch this. When we knock on that door right there, I guarantee you that's the house mom is going to answer the door. And I'm going to get her to get Disney for her kids. I'm going to get her to get a uh, hunting magazine for her husband. I'm talking about, I would pick out like three or four magazines that we had a list, probably a hundreds of magazines, but I would pick out certain magazines. And then when they'd answer the door, I would follow through and I'd get the sale. And the new person would be like, dang, that's cold. Like you, you told me exactly what you was going to do and you did it right. Watch this. I used to say it all the time. I call it out. Sometimes I would say it, watch this. And it would be a challenge because a guy would answer the door. I used to feel like I wasn't as good as talking to guys into stuff for some reason. I don't know. I felt like I was the one that was going to get the girls to do what I want them to do. <laughs> but I was still do it though. But I would say, watch this. And a guy would answer the door. And sometimes I would have to really go back and forth at a very high level of communication to get them to get the, the subscription that I said I was going to get them to get. But I would always do it because it was so important to me to impress the new person how easy the job is. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew that I had liked the job so much because somebody had showed me a confident, brave way to go about things. And I thought, Dang, I want to do like that. I like how they did that. That, that looked pretty good. I want to be able to sell that good, you know, and get the customer to laugh. And because we used to go like this, like we just start nodding like this. Next thing you know, the customer's nodding. And then I just start high-fiving them. They start high-fiving me back. Now I got them going like this. And then next thing you know, I'm like, sign here. And they sign right there. Like, it's just... You got, you know what I'm saying, Bob. Like next thing you know, like I just, I'm walking them through it, man, and they're nodding because that's a big part of it. Like, hey, you, really, what do you like to do for fun? You like to do this, don't you? Yeah, and just lead them into yeses, yes, 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 and then okay, that'll be 500 cash. You got that right? Yes. Okay, you see what I'm saying? You just kind of lead them right there into it. But it would always be a watch this mentality. And as I started sharpening my skills, I used to like going to like malls, right? So my thing back then when I was 19, 20 years old, when I was first fresh in the magazine business, 
I used to like to buy an outfit every day, a brand new outfit. So, and then I figured out that I could sell the magazine subscriptions at the mall. And then I figured out that I could hang out right by the ATM machine and sell them. <laughs> so I'm talking about, it just kept getting better and better. And I told y'all that I was a leader in the business. So I used to drop people off in all kinds of different neighborhoods. And then I would go to the mall, park the van, the 15 passenger van. And I know where I got to go pick everybody up because it's in my head. Literally, I would start the day off with a car card. Like this sheet's got like 50 people on it, 40 people. But guess what? I would have a car card with like 15 to 20 names on it, y'all. That's how many people would be in the van for the day. We'd have a 15 passenger totally full with two people in the very back. You know that section where you open up the back door behind the back seat? You had two people in there like this. You open up the door, they'd be like, the lowest producers, that's right, the lowest producers. So we'd have probably 17 people in the back of a 15-passenger van and be like, let's go, let's go. So what I would do is I'd drive down the street and I would drop people off every block or every two blocks. Okay, you got this street. Tear it up, rip it up, get a bunch, get a lot, get a lot. We had these like sayings we do. And everybody clapping, all right, go, 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 and they slam the door. All right, now the person who ever got out, they, somebody would move up from the seat behind them into that seat because it was all based on production. So I would map it out when I dropped somebody off. Okay, you got these two streets, and I'm driving. Okay, now you got these two streets, and then you hear everybody hollering, all right, rip it up, get a bunch, get a lot, get a load, everybody. And then they jump out, and you're just driving down the street, and I got people on this side and this side. So I would know that all I have to do is find that corner and then I know where all the pickup spots are at. You got what I'm saying? So that's how I would map territory in these random cities that we would go to. And then I would drop everybody off and I'd take a new person. Now everybody's out of the car and it's just me and my new person. I look at them and be like, watch this. And they'd be like, what? I'd be like, Let me, I'm about to show you something. And I take him with me, go to the mall, and we jump out in the parking lot. First girl I'd see look like she's got some a good job or something. Hey, you dropped your smile. She she turn around, and look on the ground. She'd be like, "What?" I said, "You dropped your smile." She'd be like, "Oh, you know." Like, I'd be like, "No, nah, let me tell you what I'm doing. Real, let me tell you what I'm doing real quick." And next thing you know, so I'm doing this contest, right? We get to travel the country. We're trying to get people to sign up. Basically, we got to get points. So all I need you to do is get real excited for me and ask me how I get my points. Well, how do you get your points? Oh, that wasn't excited. I need you to get really excited. Well, how do you get your points? <laughs> I'll be like, hi, Bob. Thanks for asking. How do you get your points? Yeah, hey, yeah. So, yeah, so we got to get 35,000 points. They're matter babies. You know, you know what a matter baby is? She'd be like, no. I'd be like, really? Where are you from? She'd be like, Arkansas. I'd be like, oh, that might be why. So you just got to ask me what a matter baby is. Okay, what's a matter baby? <laughs> Nothing, baby. What's the matter with you? So it was just like crushing it all the way through, little stuff like that, you know. And then it'd be like, nah, it's magazines. Just like last year, I'd pull out this big colorful list. You just gotta go through and pick out the ones that you like. And I'm gonna write down your favorite five on my little piece of paper right here, which is a receipt, by the way. So I write down the favorite five. I'm gonna write down your favorite five right here. I'm gonna compare the prices and points. And basically you get to pick the ones that you like the most, whatever, whatever ones are your favorites at the end. Okay, great. All right, so what type of stuff do you like to do for fun? You like swimming, fishing, flying, boating, camping, cooking, trucking? You know, just, and I wouldn't even tell you the rest of that joke. But anyways, uh, <laughs> so it was just one thing after another, man. And then I would say, all right, cool. So you get uh, Cosmopolitan. You can pick out, you get 36 issues for only $54, which is a dollar something an issue. You know that when you go to the store and you pick out a magazine off the shelf, it's going to cost you like, what, $5.99, $6.99. So... 
getting it through us, you only pay a dollar or something an issue. Pretty good deal, right? Right. Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? They're, they're nodding. High five. So next thing you know, they're nodding. Right. So next thing you know, uh, then you can get a, a home and garden, you know, 36 issues for $36. That one's only a dollar an issue. And then so I would show them all five magazines, how many points I'd get total. And this one helps me. And look, this is the best way you can help me out. You want to help me out the most, right? Right. Okay, cool. High five again. So next thing you know, I'd say, okay, so you get to pick out this, this magazine, these magazines. You get all five of them. Look, all the coolest girls help me with all five. You want to be like one of the coolest girls, right? And, you know, some of them be like, ah, oh, come on now. I know what you're up to. But anyways, so I would say, yeah, so the, the total is going to come up to $342. And you're going to get these magazines for this long at this cost. And it's going to help me out with this many points. Are you as excited as I am? You know, do you need change? It would literally be like that. Oh, I ain't got that much cash on me. I'd be like, oh, there's an ATM right there. <laughs> You know what ATM stands for, right? No. Access to magazines. <laughs> Access to me if you're single. No, I'm just kidding. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so look, check it out. So it would just be a lot of stuff like that, right? And then next thing you know, guess what? She's going to the ATM. 95 to 99% of the time, so when I would tell the new person, watch this, it was about something. It would blow their mind. They'd be like, wow, how long you been doing this? You know, yeah, just a couple years. And I would show these new people how we could go out and make hundreds of dollars a day just doing the magazine subscriptions, right? My high day, I had the highest high day in the country because after I learned how to do the malls, then I learned how to go to the dorms at colleges, which also have an ATM downstairs. So I would go to the dorms and knock on, I'd go straight to the girl's dorm and knock on the door and there'd be like stickers on the front door. It'd be like Sarah, Jessica, Susie, Veronica, Kelly. I'd be like, ah, oh, we in there. And so they would come to the door, boom, give them the whole spiel that I gave to the girl at the mall that I just told you about and it would be straight watch this and it would be back to back sometimes I'd have five of them all walking downstairs with me at the same time with their ATM cards buying all the most magazines for all the most cash so it would be and it was exciting I really enjoyed it it was a, it was a thrill you know to be able to make people laugh you know, get excited about the job, and not only that, but make tons of money doing it. Now, as you guys know, I've, I've done a lot of life changes since magazines. As a matter of fact, when I gave my life to Christ, I decided I didn't want to be in that business anymore. I decided that uh, there was no, it just, just was no way to make it the type of thing I wanted to do with my life. And it was a really hard point in my life, but at that time in my life, I actually made a commitment to God that from now on, instead of looking at the magazine business, I'm going to consider God as my, the company owner and Jesus as my manager and the Holy Spirit as my trainer. And I'm going to be about good stuff instead of just trying to talk people out of money. You understand what I'm saying? So that's kind of... The difference between the mindset that I have when I was uh, back when I was young and just trying to talk people out of money and stuff like that, and when I gave my life to the Lord. But the confidence and the courage that it took to say, watch this, is what I want to talk to you guys about today. Because although this is a different business, the watch this mentality still applies. Because look, whatever good you can do out in the community, listen, when you have a new person with you, you can approach your day just like that. You can say, new person, watch this. Watch this. It's going to be a great day today. Watch how many people we help. 
Follow me. Watch how many good things that we accomplish today while we're out working. Watch how many people sign up for this product with us. Watch how many people cry today because they're so appreciative that we help them out. Watch this. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this isn't something that just applies for when you're training somebody. This applies in your own mindset. You can be confident enough to tell yourself, oh, yeah, watch this. Watch this. Look, I got all these products. I got all this territory. Watch this. Watch what I do with it. Watch the type of opportunity that I turn this into. Hey, Junior, don't you think like that sometimes? But when you're going to work, watch this. Watch what happens when I get out here. These people are going to know what's up. These people are going to get the best product. They ain't nobody saying no today. Watch this. Right? It's, men it's a mentality. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is bravery. I literally looked up the word brave. Check this out. Look, look, look. Ready to face and endure danger or pain. Showing courage. Right? That's being brave. When you can look at a situation and realize that it might be some risk involved, it might hurt. When I say hurt, you might not have thought as hard as some of us have for a long day of work out there. This, sometimes this day will drain your thoughts so much, your mind ahead will hurt. You done ran so many orders. You done looked at so many different personalities. You done had to answer so many questions. You'll be like, man. This is deep, but guess what? You can be brave enough to do it. Even knowing how tough it is or how hard the challenge is, you can be brave enough to overcome. So this says endure or face un look, endure or face unpleasant conditions or behavior without showing fear. Right? I think that's a key point that we really need to tap into because when a challenging situation comes up, it's easy to show fear, right? But if you're brave, you won't. You'll stand strong and face the day, face the challenge, face the customers, whatever it is you got to face without showing no fear. You got to be brave enough to face your challenges. You got to be brave enough to endure whatever's coming along with the challenge. Whether it might be a painful situation because you're out there grinding so much you don't put your tent up three times in one day and your back hurts. You got to keep being brave. You can't tap out. You got to be strong enough to make the next right thing happen without being fearful. You got to have the positive mindset, the right mindset that we talk about all the time. You guys come off that back row for me, please. Come up here in uh, to these chairs. I already got everybody else off the back row, too. Just come up here and fill some of these chairs. We'll, we'll, hey, look, that back row will be right back opened up as soon as we get some more people in here. Um, I looked up some synonyms for brave. Y'all know words that are like words. Right. Check it out. One of the synonyms is adventurous. Willing to take risks. Or try out new methods, ideas, or experiences. Full of excitement. Remember how I was telling you that at first I was going to doors in the magazine business and I got real good at it and I used to be able to tell the new people, watch this. And I would show what kind of person was going to answer the door and I would tell them, watch when they open the door, watch how good I am at this. Watch, watch, watch. And I would do such a good job selling the person the product at the door. But look, I became adventurous in my craft because I learned how to go be versatile and try it in different ways in different places. That's how I figured out about going to the malls with that product. It says willing to take risks, right? Guess what? The first time I went to a mall, I wasn't comfortable with it. I had no clue what I was doing. As a matter of fact, I just heard that somebody else did that. I remember. I just heard that somebody else went to malls. 
And they looked like they was having a better way to go by getting sales at the mall. So I was adventurous enough to take a risk and go try it out myself. Right? I was brave. I decided, hey, there might be another way I could go do this that I could get some good results out of. Why don't I go try it? Right? And guess what? When I thought about going to try the new way of doing it, in my mind, I thought, well, what if this happens? What if it doesn't work out? What if they laugh at me? What if they tell me no? What if they don't buy it? Right? I had all those thoughts. But guess what? I was brave enough to go try it. And so I went to try it. Same thing happened when I started learning how to go into the dorms. Listen, it's a different product and a different sales pitch, but it's the same type of thing that we could do in this business. Right? Anytime you're thinking about expanding your territories and expanding your craft, you have to be brave enough to go do it. This says adventurous, willing to take risks. That's what it is when you're thinking about stretching yourself and going to try something a new way. It's a little risky, isn't it? Because you're thinking, I know how to do it this way. So if I go try it that way, what if it doesn't work and I don't get enough business in the day? That's why it's called taking a risk, right? If you're trying to stretch yourself into another level, you got to take the risk sometimes. You got to be willing to stretch out and go, I don't know how to do it. But you know what you could do? You could go off the data that you learned from the other people in the office. You go, well, I know there's got to be a way I could get it at doors because I've done heard stories of people like Justin that crushes it and gets tablet sales more cash than some people get in phone sales every day. How much cash you been getting in at doors? 80 to 100 when you go? Just tablet cash? Yeah, on top of his extra regular money. So, but guess what? He had to be brave enough to go do it for himself. He seen me do it. He saw me get a bunch of cash at doors one time. But he had to be brave enough to go do it himself. Because watching me do it don't put money in his bank account. He had to be brave enough to step out there on his own and go try it. I'm like, here, look, adventurous. So look, be brave, be adventurous. Go try something new. Look, audacious. Showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. Ooh. Showing a willingness, this is being audacious. Showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. Surprisingly bold. That's like you get an idea and it seems like it might work out. So you're so, it's a, almost like a surprise. I didn't, ha I didn't know I was going to go do this today, but I just had this great idea. So I'm going to be bold enough to go try it, right? It'll help you expand if you take those type of risks, but you got to be brave, right? Brave means you experience fear and you experience doubt, but you go crush it anyways. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how you be brave. Do you know how many heavy hitter fighters talk about how fearful they've been, but they still went out on the ring and crushed it? Like world champions they say i was scared but i wouldn't show it I, I was fearful but i wouldn't show it that's brave that's brave confident i love this up confident feeling or showing confidence in oneself self-assured look i wrote this down godfidence i done told y'all about that philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me Right. So me, I, I, that, that tells me that I got more than enough reason to be brave because I ain't got nothing to fear. Look, what normal person would fear. I ain't got nothing to fear because the worst thing that can happen to me is the best thing that can happen to me. If I die, guess where I go? Eternal paradise. So that's the worst thing that can ever happen to me. So what do I got to be scared of? Nothing. 
So I need to be brave. When I know there's something I need to go handle, when I know there's something I need to step up to the plate and handle it, I need to be brave. There's no reason to be fearful. And even if I do feel fear, I can still do the act. I don't have to let fear control me and, and ruin me and be miserable. Because that's what happens when you're controlled by fear. When you're the type of person that has a bunch of great ideas but doesn't do any of them because you're scared. Do you want to be that type of person or do you want to be the type of person that does have some scary thoughts, but you do the, the, the thing anyways? That's brave. <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you all something. I was reflecting and I was realizing that a lot of the, the feats that I've accomplished in life, I've seen somebody else do something. I seen somebody else accomplish something and I thought to myself, I can do that too. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I literally, I am one of those people that are so original in so many ways, but I have to be straightforward and let you know that there has been people that have inspired me every single level. Because when I reach a level and I see somebody that's activating at a higher purpose in some, some way, shape or form, it pushes me to go, I can do that too. Wait, that's at a higher capacity. What? And I start investigating. I start looking into it heavy. Wait, what do I need to do? What type of attitude do I need to have? What type of uh, resources do I need? What type of money do I need? What type of people do I need around me? What type of health do I have to have? What type of mindset? Everything, all inclusive. And then I level up. In part of my motivational studies this morning, I learned that Mike Tyson, listen, and let's not get into his, uh, whether he's right or wrong about anything. I don't bring stuff up to argue. I bring stuff up about people that accomplish something and we can at least admit that people have done a good job at some things, right? No matter what. The Bible says to give credit where it's due. That man knocked some people out. So guess what? <laughs> argue with that. <laughs> But watch this. <clears throat> Mike Tyson, look. He met Muhammad Ali when he was 12 years old. Muhammad Ali came to a prison that Mike Tyson, juvenile detention that Mike Tyson was locked up in. And Mike Tyson thought to himself, I want to be like him. And guess what? He went and did it. At 12 years old, he thought to himself, I want to be a mean person like that guy is and knock everybody out. He looked up to Muhammad Ali and he thought, I could be like that too. And guess what he did? He went and did it. He literally became the top boxer in the world, right or wrong. Where people literally interview him to this day, like, what's up with your mindset? How did you do it? Because he was so fierce. But he will be honest and admit to you that it was Ali that inspired him. So that being the case, you can learn brave. You can learn brave because you can look at somebody else that has accomplished something and think, if they're that brave, I can be too. He looked at one man looking at another man and going, that man is that strong? I want to be that strong. And then he became that strong. Brave. You can learn brave. Look, you can see, that's like new people. You could come in here and you could see some of the leaders doing a great job. You could go, I could do that too. If, if Mike Tyson, when he's 12 years old, could decide to be like Muhammad Ali and then go become the top boxer in the world, then you sure as heck could come into head straight up and see a leader doing a good job, and then you become a, a good leader too. You're not trying to be them. You're trying to be like them in some good qualities. Does that make sense? You got you could be you, but you could be you could learn qualities from somebody else. Right? And sometimes you gotta eat the chicken and, and throw out the bone. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes you get you don't want to be all the way like somebody for a lot of different reasons, especially if they're not quality of a mentorship status, right or wrong. 
So you don't want to pick up all their habits, just the good ones. Right? There's a lot of people that have inspired me, but sometimes when I look at the inspiration, I have to think, I can do that like they do, but I don't want to do that like they do. You got to have wisdom in it, right? You can follow good inspiration from others, but you don't want to. That's why my inspirations are like a collaboration of all kinds of different lessons and people throughout my life. Because I've never found one person besides Jesus Christ that's got it all together. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody's got it all the way right. So I ain't trying to be all the way like nobody except that one somebody. <clears throat> Courageous, not deterred by anger or danger or pain. Brave, kind of synonym. Daring, listen, daring, adventurous, adventurous or audaciously bold, bold, showing an ability to take risks, confident, courageous, having a strong look, bold, having a strong, vivid appearance, right? So I thought bold, you can be bold in action and appearance. That's why it's so important that we have a good dress code here. Because you can be bold in your attitude and your dress code. Somebody, certain people, if you dress sharp enough, somebody will take you real serious. If you carry yourself in a certain fashion where they have respect for you just because of the way you carry yourself. And it has to do with attitude and whether you shaved today or not. Or whether you did your hair. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. When you look at somebody and they didn't do that, you think they don't really care about their self. They don't care how they look. Right? So be bold enough to take care of yourself in your attitude and your appearance. In the magazine business, they used to tell us, if you look good, you feel good. Right? It's important to have a good appearance and a good representation of yourself. Bold. Think about it. The, the Bible even talks about being bold, sharing the gospel, right? Being bold is a very important thing. When you're standing out there representing your product, be bold. Hey, did you get your phone or tablet yet? Hey, come here. I got you. Smile. Be bold. Have a good, courageous attitude. Don't be shy. Listen. One time, they got, one, one time somebody, uh, one, of the, one of my people got kicked out of a spot. You know what I did? I went out there and got the spot back for him. I jumped out the car. I was like, who kicked you out? <laughs> I, who kicked you out? Where? They did, right there. Where, the QT? Oh, all right, I'm pulling up right now. I walked right inside the QT, and you know what I told them? Hey, excuse me. Uh, so we're with the Lifeline ACP, the government program. Basically, what the government does is they send us out here to represent the, this product in the community. So we're going to be setting up somewhere outside. Where would you suggest we set up? We're going to be setting up somewhere right outside. Where would you think the best spot would be? Assuming the, Assuming the clothes. And they had just told the people to get out of there. Guess what? They said, then now we're getting to the answer. Because I'm in their official. Bold. Courageous. Brave. Confident. Smiling. Right? Hey, how you doing today, ma'am or sir? So we're with the government program, the ACP and Lifeline. You've probably seen the people that do the phones and stuff. We're the best ones. Um, so we're going to be outside today. Uh, setting setting up, where would you suggest would be the best place to set up? Literally, right after they just kick some people out. Oh, uh, well, we don't really like people setting up out there. Well, why is that? I said. Well, because the parking is interfering with our flow of tra uh, business. Oh, not a problem. Um, so basically what we'll do today is we'll make sure that nobody parks in the way. I'll make sure everybody parks on property. Where would you think the best place to set up is, though? Well, I don't know. Probably out there towards the corner. Okay, that works. And what's your name? Melissa, you the manager? 
Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. Who are you? Are you the security? Yeah, okay, cool. Well, my name's Bobby. If you have any problems for him, I'll make sure to tell him to uh, call me and I'll, and I'll handle it. Okay, great. Have a great day. All right, cool. Hey, you guys, you guys can set up, man. Come on, look. I'm going to show y'all where you're going to set up at. Because I turn the situation around by having a brave attitude, confidence, right? Because I know that we're not doing everything, anything wrong and we're doing everything right. If we're not doing anything wrong and we're doing everything right, why do I got to be scared? About what? No, nah, we, we're setting up right outside. Where do you think the best place to set up would be? Simple. And then guess what? Then I held the team accountable. I said, hey, check it out. This is the instructions for today. When somebody comes up, you can come up off the back. I had everybody move off the back row today, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to make a, the, the crowd look thicker. Makes me feel more confident. But anyway, so, yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, basically, I told the people at the tents, hey, guess what? Whenever the customers come up today, back then we had to get ID. Ask the customer to go ahead and give you their ID. As soon as they give you their ID, tell them, now you got their ID. Hey, sir, ma'am, could you do me a favor and park right over at the CVS and just walk over? This is like on 19th and Dunlap. There used to be a CVS there. Now it's like a shoe store or something. WSS, yeah. So, easy as could be. So, we was at the QT. The customers would come up, flocking, just like they always do at that spot. They come right up, and then they simply get their ID, and then have them go park across the street. And we were able to function like that for a little while and not get kicked out. Because I was brave and went in there and talked to them. With a good attitude. With a with the confidence, right? With a clear conscience. That that matters. Like I said, if you're doing nothing wrong and you're doing everything right, why ain't you confident? You touched on something earlier and that was just simply you made reference to the lady that dropped her smile. Uh -huh. You can't drop your smile. Yeah, don't drop, you your, drop smile. your smile. Pick it up. Yep. Keep it on your face because it makes you approachable. Big deal. And that's one thing I told my family this morning. I said, hey, that's one thing I want to work on today. I want to make sure to smile more. I want my outside to look as happy as my inside is. You understand what I'm saying? I want to look as happy on the outside as I am in my spirit. Instead of like, you know, like, I don't know. Some of that stuff I carried with me from, from before. I, I got to get rid of that. I need to be like this because it's real. It's like, yeah, I got a lot to be excited about. And you do too. We all need to be smiling and carrying a joyful spirit attitude and representing ourselves brave and confident. Dashing. Chuck, check this out. This is another synonym for brave. Dashing. Dashing. Attractive. I might hear it is again. We're talking about being brave and I'm looking up synonyms and now we got attractive popping up. Right? So I think brave is kind of attractive. What do you think? Isn't it? And we also need to think about the fact that once again, that's considering appearance. Right? What, what happens when somebody sharp shows up on the scene? Respect, right? Oh, I'm telling you right now, if I show up somewhere, the way I'm going to walk in, if I'm serious about something, they're going to respect what I'm saying. They're gonna, I'm going to be on point. I'm coming in uh, on point. Everything's on point, and I'm coming in confident. Hey, check it out. This is what we're going to do. And next thing you know, they're going to respect that, right? I know that's how I'm coming. You got to know that's how you're coming. But you ain't, you ain't going to know that's how you're coming unless that is how you're coming. So work on that. Work on your appearance. Work on the way that you process your, your communication, the way you talk to people, the way you use your words, do you hear how I'm talking right now? How I'm stressing the words? Listen. How I'm confidently using my words. I'm not just up here talking like this, like where you just can barely even hear me and I'm not really <laughs> motivated or anything like that. Where, you know, if you wanted to buy something or you didn't, it's not even a big deal. Just sign right here or not. Nah. 
I'm up here using my words and I'm declaring it in a way that you can hear it and understand it and you feel it, don't you? Right. That's confidence. That's carrying yourself in a certain way and being heard. Right? It's attractive. People are attracted to confidence. They want to hear you declare something in a strong, powerful way. Hey, come on over here. We got the best deal. We got the best deal. Not, you want to come get a phone? <laughs> nah, come get your phone. Come get your tablet. Free services. Come sign up. Bold. Courageous. Brave. Enthusiasm. Attract enthusiasm. Attractive. Adventurous. Look. And full of confidence. Stylish and fashionable. Right? Why not throw that in there? Why not throw that in there? You'll be surprised. You could go to Goodwill and make an outfit pop. The way they got, as much as donate, there's no nation like a donation. And we got plenty of it going on in this country. Listen, there's no nation like a donation. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of donations in this country. So if you want to go get a startup kit, go somewhere and get you a little startup dress kit. You could probably go to Goodwill if you just came into this job. You don't have that much money. You could go to Goodwill and find you something. That, look, if you walk with enough confidence, they wouldn't even know you got it at Goodwill. They'd be like, man, that's sharp, right? And if you really try to do something with your money, you could shop there anyways. You could go, go to, there's some stores where you could get some really nice looking outfits. And you could put it together. Look, these pants ain't even that expensive. These are like, these are a company called Built, and they don't even cost as much as you would think. I just got a really nice belt on with a nice pair of shoes, right? So if I come in, they're going to receive me like I'm balling, but I got on a cheap pair of pants. Don't let nobody know. You know what I'm saying? They're probably like under 100. I don't know what cheap is. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of your thrift stores, not just good well, but savers and so forth. And most of your thrift yeah. stores uh, have, have a couple times a month where everything's half price. Find out when those are and go there on those days. Yeah, go get you a deal. For the same month. Go get you a deal. And look. Yeah, and look, I'm going I'm to help pull some people up. You know what happens with style and confidence? You try in life, and then if you fail, then next time you might not be willing to try as hard. So what I'm trying to get everybody to do is take all your best potential you've ever had your entire life and bring it to the table right now. Look, you might have tried to dress sharp before, and it didn't work out, and you're just tired of trying. Forget all that, man. Try again. Try hard again. You feel better. You'll feel better. Look, believe me, you want to be confident. You want to be bold. You want to have bravery. When you think of an idea, go try it. Don't let it just pass you by. Gene? Uh huh. Yeah, they're never going to say Joseph's work. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, Let's see. So, fearless obviously is lacking fear. Gutsy. Gutsy. Look, gutsy. Showing courage, determination, and spirit. Listen, y'all. I need y'all to tap into this watch this attitude. Listen, when you start your day, you got to face the day like watch this. It doesn't matter if you're training anybody or not. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, watch this. Watch what I do today. Watch what I do today. Do you know this has become such a big part of my personality that I lead this company with that attitude. I'm constantly thinking, watch this. Why, wait, wait till they see this. 
You don't even know. I think like that all the time. I'm like, wait till they see what I do with this event. Wait till they see how we pull up in Vegas. Watch this. Wait till they see how we're above the, the, the Vegas skyline looking down and the company's called headed straight up. Wait till they experience this. Watch. Wait till they see the limo pull up outside. Bigger limo than anybody's ever been in before. Wait till they see me handing out big wads of cash. Watch this. I think like that all the time. When we're doing sales, when I'm in contracting, guess what I'm saying? Watch this. Anytime I'm making deals, I'm thinking, oh, watch. I tell people that. I'll be like, watch this. Oh, you think 500 a week's a lot? Watch. Wait till it's a thousand. You think that's a lot? Watch this. Now it's 1500. You think that's a lot? Watch this. Now it's 2500. It's 3000. Working our way up constantly. Go moving up. Watch this. Oh, you thought that was something? Watch this. You got to have confidence if you're going to level up. You need to impress yourself. Look, you got so much hidden potential inside of you. You should be making yourself go wow. Literally. Blow your own mind. Tell yourself, watch this. Watch this. Oh, you thought that was good. Watch this. Everybody say, watch this. Watch this. That's right. Watch this. Watch this. Let's do it again. Watch this. Watch this. Yeah, watch this. You think that was something? Watch this. You think 15 a day was something? Tell your significant other. Start bragging when you get home at night. Baby, I had 15 today. You think that's something? Watch this. Wait till tomorrow. You think that you thought that was something? Watch this. Look, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get some momentum going and, and ride on it like a wave, right? The watch this mentality, bravery, and the way you're gonna really impress yourself. Listen, do you think you're gonna impress yourself if you do what you've always did? How impressive do you think you're going to be with yourself if you only do what you've always done? How impressive is that? Have you ever heard anybody say, watch this about something they've already done? I'm saying, look, you ain't going to be telling, if your weeks are usually 50 sales, why would you go say, watch this, if you're just going to have 50 sales? That's not that exciting. You would even tell you that's not exciting. You'd be like, why? That's lame. Why did I just get all motivated about the same thing I always do? But guess what? If you were to stretch yourself to the next level and do something extraordinary that you maybe never done before, that would be worth saying, watch this, right? And you got to have that confidence within your own mindset. And the way you're going to do it is by doing things you've never done before. That's how you get on that watch this mentality. Like, hey, look in the mirror when you're leaving in the morning. Huh, watch this. Tell yourself, watch this. Yeah, you think that was a heavy push-up routine? Watch this. It's going heavier now. You think that was a good health routine? Watch this. I'm about to level up. Listen, you got to get some momentum going. You got to set some goals and do some things you never did before. Once you start doing that, you'll want to do it more and more. You'll tap in. You'll be like, man, this is fun. This is fun. I'm accomplishing goals. I just did three things I said I was going to do. It's a big deal. Do you know that 95% of the people in this world don't do what they say they're going to do? I don't know the exact amount, but it's got to be that or worse. Most of the time, people say, I'm going to do this, man, and they don't. Or they say, I'm not going to do this anymore, but they do. So guess what that means? Nobody even believes their self. People really know they're lying to their self when they tell their self they're going to do something or not do something. Once you tap into that level of accomplishing and doing the things you tell yourself you're going to do, you're going to realize the difference of what it used to be. You're going to realize, dang, I used to be the kind of person that would say I'm going to do this and not do it. 
or not say I'm not going to do something and still do it. But when you practice, practice, and you be brave, right? You got to be brave. You got to be brave and do some things that are scary. How are you going to become the next level salesperson or the next level enrollment specialist or the next level leader if you don't step out and do some things that are scary? I have to do scary stuff all the time. I have to have conversations that are very uncomfortable all the time. And I literally know that if I don't do it, I'm not doing my job. So I do it. So you guys got to start tapping into some, some things that are challenging. You got to be brave. Everybody say it. You got to be brave. Let's do it louder than that. You got to be brave. That's right. You got to step out and be brave. Bravery is not not being scared. Bravery is being scared but not letting it be evident. Bravery is being scared but not showing it. How would you not show it? Look, let's say you're nervous about running across the street and, and getting a sale. How would you not show it? Right. You got to do the opposite of what it feels like your flesh feels like doing. Your flesh probably feels like not going to talk to the person because you play the scenario out in your head and you think, no, I might run up to them and they might not want to do it. And you imagine that in your head and then you go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to chill. I ain't going to go all the way over there and do all that. <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong. But if you really, if you think to yourself, yeah, maybe they will say no, but I'm going to be brave and go over there and talk to them anyways. You're going to have a better chance of making more money and doing better over the top stuff if you step out and be brave. Look, maybe, look, there's some scenarios where you're going to need to go set up on a territory and stop being scared of what might happen. You might need to go set up right in front of that shop or right on that corner. Some of the times you might need to go in and get permission and stop being scared. One or the other. You either need to be brave and go ahead and set up there, right? Or you need to be brave and go ahead and go inside and ask. And if they tell you no, you got to be brave enough to keep going and ask the next place. But... Being a coward and not facing your fears is not going to get you anywhere. you got to stand up and make it happen. Be brave. Everybody say it one more time. Be brave. Be brave. That's right.